What's up everybody? I'm Tyler. And I'm Brittany. And we're not sawmilling today. <laughs> As you guys can tell, we're out for a day on the river. Aiden's got a big old bag of jugs. We're waiting on Joe to come and get in the boat up there. He's he's uh, parking my truck. Aiden, you're getting left behind. Look, we're floating off. Bye, Aiden. See you next week, bud. <laughs> All right, we're at the spot. We're about to start throwing some jugs out. I got Joe over here baiting. Aiden is unrolling the jugs and Brittany's unrolling the jugs. I am the navigator, I'm driving and dropping them into the uh, positions. So let me show you what we got going on here for those of you that don't know what jug fishing is. So basically our jugs have got X amount of, I'm blanking out right now. Rope, line, line. that's the word, haha. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good pause. But anyway, you, uh, I think we run like 12 to 15 feet, right, Joe? Usually. Somewhere in that neighborhood. And uh, put bait on them, chunk them out. We got a weight that's about mm, two foot from the uh, hook. And once they go out into the water, they, well, basically you got your weight all the way to the bottom and you got two foot there of a leader that your bait is floating on. And we keep a count on how many we got out and we want to recover that many. We don't want to lose any of our jugs no more than then we want to pollute the water in any kind of way, so. Right now we're in, it's hard to see on it. Well, you can see, 12-2. So we're pretty much fishing on the bottom with the length we have. We like to put out like 10 or 15 in an area then we go to a different area and put another 10 or 15. All the jugs are out. Now we gotta see if we're gonna catch anything. Comment down below if you think we're gonna catch anything this time. We gotta catch something or we're gonna go hungry. Because the premise of this video, whatever we catch, we're gonna cook it and eat. If we catch a drum, Joe's eating it though. <laughs> For those that don't know, freshwater drum are nasty. They taste terrible. I've tried to cook them multiple ways. It's just no good. We are pitifully fishing. We're trying to catch some bass while the jugs are soaking back there. That was a limb brown maiden. Maybe going after that one. Yeah. Let me get on the uh, trolling motor. I've been fishing. Now I'm... Uh, Thinking about having a little snack time. The wind's blowing like crazy today. But we have been fishing for 10 or 15 minutes and uh, no hits on this bank. So we're gonna move somewhere else. All right, so the fishing's been a little few and far between, but we think we think this one's got one on there because it's cross river and we think we seen it stand up when we were way back a minute ago. Okay. We finally, finally, she's got to land it or we're going to be skunked. Woo, we got it. All right. It's not a lot, guys. <laughs> but we're not going to starve. <laughs> All right. One in the wet well. the next morning and for those of you that have made it to this part of the video yesterday's fishing experience was one that all fishermen have experienced at least once probably tons of times we got rained out 
We fished for an hour and a half. The, the bite was slow. We casted and casted and casted. Joe was changing lures. Brittany was changing lures. I kept throwing that jerk bait over and over. And the, the bite was off. I don't know why. We tried different locations, different depths, different spots. The bite was off. The jugs were fishing for us. We went and checked them right before we ended. You'll see the clips. We ended up catching one. Two hours of fishing, one fish. sad fishing trip. Yeah. So it, it's like that sometimes. You're not, it, they would call it catching if it was, you know, always catching. But it's fishing, so we were out there trying our best. But the next morning, I'm gonna cook some fish, because, you know, look, we catch fish sometimes in excess. My freezer is stopped. I'm gonna unthaw some fish, and at the end of this video, I will be showing you guys how we cook those fish and the one fish we caught yesterday. I did clean that fish. So, um, but in between, hang out with me for a few seconds. One, I'm about to give you a homestead update. We have things growing in the garden. And two, check out the garage. It's coming together. I got both tool chests in here now. I've got to clean one up, put it over there. I've got this beat, what's it, what's it called? Uh, I can't think of it now, holy board. <laughs> the church board, holy board. No, I don't know what it's, uh, uh, pegboard. pegboard. I got it. <laughs> All right, so I got pegboard. Check it out, I got some more pegboard over here that's going on some other spots. I went to my local Lowe's and they were like, it's half off. And I was like, why? And they were like, it got water damaged. I looked at it over and over and over. They're like, the top piece on there was water damaged. So I was like, well, how much is there? 50% off. So I got six sheets for 12 bucks a sheet. I'm super pumped about that. Three are hung, there's nothing wrong with them. I got three more to hang. Let's go check out the garden. If you guys can tell, it definitely came a big rain this morning, but I gotta do some, I do, I, look, I know I need to do a little bit of weeding. We're gonna get out here with a hoe this evening, maybe tomorrow. But anyway, check out the onions. You can see the rows, all those onions. Over here, we got cabbage and broccoli. And we got two rows of peas. Now, if you look really close, guys, one row is pretty straight and one row is a little bit crooked. Mine's a straight one. I want you guys in the comments <laughs> right now below to guess who planted the straight row and who planted the crooked row. It was us two, so which one of us did what? Now, this is my project. This is our uh, raised garden bed that we built last year, and I've started my strawberries in here. See, some of them are already coming up. Yep, we already got strawberries. Check it out. Now, the plan is to build about six beds identical to this with a lot more space in between them. And then a couple of them I'm planning on doing like a cattle panel trellis from one to the other. And then we're going to plant cucumbers so that they grow over the trellis and maybe even some like snap peas or something yeah. i don't know something cool that will trellis and runs now we got to get to work and then later this evening we're going to go back into the house we're going to take care of cooking those fish the one fish we caught plus some others we caught last year and we'll have a little fish dinner to conclude this thing so i'll see you there we made it to the end of the day and as promised i'm about to take this fish, uh, let me show you the one piece of fish that we caught. This is one from yesterday. So that one fish made, well, four fillets, that, or two fillets, but four pieces I can actually fry size-wise. So I'm gonna go over here with the yellow cornmeal. We are traditionally doing southern fried fish. Now the other fish I had to bring out some bass we caught last year, um, you know, froze. So we're gonna do some bass and then catfish. We'll do a little taste test there. So I'll put a little bit more cornmeal in here and I like to add into my cornmeal just a little bit of flour. I add just a little bit of flour into that mix. Just, I feel like it makes a slightly better breading. We'll do some Tony's Creole seasoning into our mix. I like things that have some flavor, so we're gonna add a little bit. All right, now we're gonna add a little salt and a little pepper. We're gonna mix in our dry seasons now. Now we take our fish over into our batter. Lightly batter our fish. 
You can see the difference in that catfish and that bass. Catfish has a, a lot whiter meat. Look at look over here. See the white catfish, and then this is the bass. I think bass and catfish have a distinctly different taste and texture. Completely different. Which one do you like, Miss Brittany? Uh, I think I like the taste of catfish better. But, than I do bass, but I think what she's saying here, I know exactly where she's going. <laughs> She likes the taste of catfish better, but she likes the idea of a clean bass yeah. better. Because catfish are known bottom feeders and whatnot, whereas bass are like, you know, eating uh, live little fishes and stuff they catch. They're predators. So, I get that. Let's take this over to the grease now. So you want this on a medium high heat right in the middle. You're shooting for about 360, 375 in that neighborhood. So you don't fry too quick. You just let it go until it's golden brown. Now I've cooked a lot of fish, fried a lot of fish in my time. Of course, I'm a Southern man, right? You, uh, usually you're in the neighborhood on fried fish for about four and a half to six minutes, depending on how thick your fillets are. But about four and a half to six minutes is a good, a good place to start. Okay, it's been about five minutes, and I can tell from touching this that they're they're getting there, pretty much done. So if I had a pair of tongs that would be a little better. I probably wouldn't burn my finger. Try to get all the excess oil off. We want to eat fish, not oil. That grip. Okay, show them on that plate we we're going to. Setting them all off on some Looking good. fresh paper towel. So Tyler's making his famous potatoes that are my favorite that he does, and he has a story about those. We call them grandma potatoes. I'll let, let him uh, tell you the story on it. All right, I'm going to tell you about these. You cut your potatoes up into kind of little wedges, you know, like, like so, and then you put them over in a pan with a little butter, a little oil, whatever you want to use. We used, I usually just put a good little drop of butter in the bottom of the pan. And my grandmother made these, and that's why Brittany calls them grandma potatoes. She remembers eating them back when my grandma was still here with us. But you just, at the end, once they're pretty much getting done, you're starting to see some browning on them. You take a little bit, a little handful of uh, cornmeal, sprinkle over the top, and then you're just going to toss them to incorporate that. And then just continue cooking them until they're done. And my grandmother made them this way for years. And I promise you they're good. They are good. All right, now it's time for the taste test. And just so you guys know, I've been working all day, kind of dirty. I'm saying nothing about that. This is the end of the day. <laughs> if you guys are watching this video, I'm about to go edit this right now. So you're pretty much eating supper with us on a Friday night. I'm about to go edit this and put it up in a little bit. What do you think, Miss Britt? Let's see what this Let's fish try. tastes like. Which one did you get, the catfish or the bass? Catfish. Mm. My favorite. Uh. All right, well, you got to have a taste test. We have to see the okay, bass comparison. The bass. She's going for the bass. What one is it? It is. All right, this is going to be the bass comparison. You can tell bass. If you look inside a bass, I'll show you here. Get close to the camera. See that little greenish line right there? That's indicative of bass. It's mm -hmm. always inside of there. I've caught a lot of fish and ate a lot of fish. I don't know. The bass? Pretty ba good. Bass mm -hmm. is firmer. Yes. And it has a, I would say a sweeter flavor. It's weird True. to say that like that, but it's what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so, not sure which one is best. Uh, they just taste different. Sometimes you could have one one day and one the next, and you've had two different meals. There is the table fare. We have Mountain Dew and potatoes and fried fish. Definitely not the most uh, healthy way, but it's the way we're gonna have it today. That, however, is gonna do it for this one, guys. I wish that we could have put together a more epic fishing journey, <laughs> got more things caught on camera, 
But I think there's a life lesson in this. Sometimes you're the hammer. Sometimes you're the nail. You just got to go with the flow. We were the nail. We got fish from last year on one of those days we were the hammer. They were froze. I added them to the one fish I caught yesterday. And we're about to have a super good meal after a long day of saw milling. So I don't think we can complain. Aiden's outside practicing for his archery competition tomorrow. About to get him in here to eat. And then we're going to be up bright and early at 6 in the morning headed to a 4-H archery competition. So that's going to do it for this one. Okay, so check out the links in the description below. There will be links to our <laughs> hats and our Patreon and the rest of our merchandise. So everything's down there. Check out the description below, guys. I'm about to end this one because this fish is going cold and I'm we're about hungry. to eat it. I'm hungry. That's going to do it. Till next time. See ya. Bam.